discuss uh, today's top headlines. We've got Matthew and Giles. Morning, morning both morning, morning. Morning. you. Morning. Let's start with um, Prince Charles stepping in for the Queen uh, yesterday at the State Opening in Parliament for the first time, or reportedly she was uh, watching uh, from home. Uh, he was seen... And many commentators said that it was quite poignant, the fact that, um, that he was seen staring intently at his mother's crown, symbolically laid on a table in, in the place of her throne, mm -hmm. Giles. I think he could well have been. He takes it all very seriously, as you would. The Queen believes in what she does. She really does believe it. And they are very aware of the heritage of it. This is a thousand-year-old institution. I know that when an actor friend of mine was appearing in the play Henry IV, Shakespeare's play, Prince of Wales came round afterwards and said, how does Shakespeare understand all this? I'm the only person, Shakespeare and me, we're the only person who actually understand what it's like to be Prince of Wales. So he does take it seriously. I can see him looking at that crown and thinking, my, my goodness, she has worn that mm. for 70 years. Mm. And I now am going to be having to step eventually into those shoes. And I think he was glad that the crown was there and he was merely reading the script. Yeah. I think the Queen had also has said on a number of occasions how heavy it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. She said, you know, actually, if you, you could fall over it, it, could, it, it, I think she once said, it could break your neck. Yeah. It's so it's me, I can imagine. And he did, he did look quite emotional, I think he? looked quite he? nervous, really, yeah. considering, you know, he's a, he's a high-profile public yeah. figure who speaks a, a lot of the time. I thought he was quite nervous. There is, there is some kind of... A, there is some kind of bitter irony, I found, that we're, we're hearing uh, uh, the government's business for the next 12 months, essentially, laid out in front of us in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis in which nothing was mentioned, watching this bloke read out the details, surrounded by gold and a crown that's been mm. ferried through London in a roller. And you kind of think, have we got our priorities? I mean, I know it's important and, and, it's, and it's, it's the foundations... And it's, it's a thousand-year-old history. That's, but, what, that's but, what makes us us around yeah, the world. Exactly. When you're starving and choosing between well, heating and eating... you want to do sell the crown. No, but when you're <laughs> heating and eating, you're looking at your government that's not coming up with any ideas. You're surrounded that, by that, gold that, and yeah, jewels. Yeah, that, if yeah. they were, if they'd just built that, I'd sort of understand if that had just been built. I mean, it's been built yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so, I mean, and it's, a, it's prime real estate. You could sell it, yeah. I assume, but that would maybe affect the tourism. Um, that as far as those bills are concerned, and that was essentially what it, I think maybe the Prince of Wales was uh, was a bit nervous because he couldn't ad lib. He's a, he's yeah. a brilliant, brilliant <laughs> yeah, yeah. public speaker maybe. and very funny. But there were no quips in that, no. and they couldn't be because it's not his speech; it's the government's mm -hmm. speech. So, principally, that was the pomp and the circumstance. Yeah. Um, and in the but, old days, he'd have written notes to some of the ministers. In the old days, a yeah. few years ago, really? he saw something he didn't like yeah. reading about in the newspapers. We've got an issue like planning and the government is very interested in housing and all of that, he would have written to Michael Gove, quite separately, a note saying, you know, dear Mr Gove, I read in the paper, this is my view, have you thought about that? Um, he stopped doing that now, and he knows that as sovereign, he can't do that. So he, I think he might have been frustrated at times reading out some of those things. Mm. Well, well, yes, yeah, without precisely. being able let's, to have an opinion. Let's talk about that, the, the, the actual contents of that speech. 38 bills. Um, Labour's call for an emergency budget to address the cost of living, a windfall tax on energy companies to fund more support. Uh, there was a, a lot of anguish over the fact that there didn't appear to be very much help within that speech for those people who can, uh, can't can either heat their homes mm. or feed their kids. Absolutely. The opening line in Prince Charles's delivery was that this was a government programme that was going to be looking and addressing the problems faced by people right now. Mm. And then they went through the 38 bills and, frankly, there was nothing in there to help those people. The best the government could do is talk about the things it's already done, most of which are deemed by energy bosses, uh, other organisations as being not good enough. And instead, instead of help for people who really need it, I would suggest that at least eight bills, maybe more, are really culture wars. They're designed to get stir up the Tory base, the new Tory base, that red wall base, get headlines in, in the right wing papers, immigrants and, and, and protesters and people who work from home. And, you know, it's, 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 it's stuff that, that's going to generate lots of headlines, lots of discussion, but does it actually help people? Yeah. I no. suspect the government would argue a bit with I'm that. I'm sure they would. And <laughs> would say that, for example, the levelling up bill is precisely about actually how to help people level up how to increase housing that is going to be affordable and accessible. And they would point to the fact that yesterday evening, the Prime Minister had the first of these COBRA meetings all about the cost of living He turned crisis. up to this one, did he? Well, he didn't turn up to any of the COBRA He turned ones, up to this one. As Chekhov <laughs> once said, any fool can cope with a crisis. 
It's the day-to-day -day living that's really getting here, us here, down. Here, here. And that yeah. is the problem for people, the day-to-day -day living with the prices going up. And that's what the government is going to have to begin to address. Well, 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 it's not feeling like a priority, is it? No, and the criticism... I mean, I, I, you know, people I have views of where I am politically, but what I find is you've got people like Gavin Barwell, who was an advisor to, I think, Theresa May, sits in the Lords, saying, you know, this isn't good enough. So you've got Tories that are saying it's not good enough. But also, I mean, there was... And uh, it's difficult to know whether it's particularly accurate, but there were certainly reports yesterday afternoon on, you know, sort of highbrow broadcast networks um, saying that he he had said that uh, in the discussion in the House of Commons that there was going to be future announcements quite soon um, uh, over uh, over further measures, yeah. financial me measures. And then the Treasury said, well, we don't know anything about that. So what was that all about? Well, the instinct of the Prime Minister is basically spend, spend, spend. Let's keep people off. happy. Let's, yeah, exactly. Let's keep people happy and spend our way out of it. The Treasury says... Long term, that isn't realistic. We've got to think of a different way of doing these things. So sell the crown. But when you when you look when you look well, well or, no. when you look at the measures that, that people are asking for, it's broadly looking at the, the, the energy people and, uh, and different organisations. They're talking we need about four four and a half billion to help people in the immediate short term. More than thirty billion went out the door in God knows what and fraud and other things. Mm. Uh, while, while during this government's watch on COVID, and you keep thinking, well, this is crazy. You've got mm. millions of people who need help. Where and billions of pounds have gone out the door? Where are you standing? Because I may be tempted to vote for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the difference. It's easy to be on the sofa. It's difficult yes, when you're actually yes. resting with all of them now. Mm -hmm. yeah.